everybody, it's me Adele and welcome to my channel Sew for Serenity where I talk to you about my sewing journey. I talk to you about my love for fabrics, patterns, dressmaking and if that channel's of interest to you, please keep on watching. Welcome back to my regular viewers and if you're new here, I hope you enjoy this vlog and consider subscribing. Happy Friday everybody and welcome to my Friday Sews vlog where I talk to you about what I've been doing in the world of sewing this week and what my plans are for the week ahead. Now, before I go any further, I do just need to apologise for my croaky voice and my sniffy nose. I've had a really bad cough and cold this week, just recovering, so feeling pretty pants, to be honest with you. Um, but I have got some sewing done, so I was keen to get on and share it with you. So, first of all, what am I wearing? I am wearing today my Jarra sweatshirt made in a sweatshirting that I got from Guthrie and Garney um, in white, which is an absolutely terrible colour for me, having three kids, but I really like this. The Jarra sweatshirt is a really nice sweatshirt. I've made a couple of these now and really like them. So, it's my... what have I been doing in the world of sewing this week? Well, today's Friday Sew centres around sewing with waterproof fabric as you would have seen in the title of the vlog now i was lucky enough to be selected as a brand ambassador for uk fabrics online which is a company i hadn't ever heard of before they put out a call um, a couple of months ago on instagram and i applied and was successful and the really th thing that i really really love about this brand ambassadorship this brand ambassadorship is that they are doing a theme every single month around a different type of fabric so so November was the first month of the um, brand ambassadorship and the first month's theme was waterproof fabric which I have never ever sewn with so it was really exciting really to a shop waterproof fabric and b choose a pattern to do with that and obviously then make with it so what I thought I'd do today is share with you the fabrics and the patterns that I made and then talk about some of the things that I found when I was obviously sewing with the waterproof fabric okay then so the fabrics that i selected from uk fabrics online i had the choice of any fabrics on their waterproof section so when i was looking at the fabrics i had got a few patterns in mind and i did um and ah about perhaps making some kind of like raincoat or something like that but i just thought with my first time of sewing with waterproof fabric i should try and choose some a project that wasn't too challenging or I didn't think was going to be too challenging because obviously this this fabric is gifted to me and I didn't want to ruin it so the pattern that I chose was a pattern that I'd got in Simply Sewing magazine and it was this one called the Bristol Backpack and I really like this style of fold over um backpack and it is um, a two-tone backpack which I thought was really cool and yeah just learning bag making skills which I've never done before and plus obviously I'd already got this pattern and it seemed simple enough so this is the pattern that I went for and you need it half a meter of the main fabric and half a meter of the um contrasting fabric and then you needed all of the bits and bobs so webbing sliders d-rings a release buckle um and all of those types of things for the hardware i chose a, a waterproof breathable microfiber sportswear fabric and the pattern did actually say to have a heavy water resistant fabric but i didn't really think that i was going to be carrying too much in this bag so i actually went for um just i wouldn't say it's heavyweight i think it would be quite lightweight um and yeah, as I say, it's described as a breathable microfiber sportswear fabric, but it said it was ideal for bags and for um, clothing. It would, have, it would have made a nice jacket. And I got it in this um, olive colour and a burgundy colour here. And they also said that you could choose some other fabrics as well, up to two metres. So because I'd only chosen a metre, um, in total for the bag i also this um canvas caught my eye which was this animal print canvas which has got like animals and safari animals all over it and um, this is a, an, um, a waterproof um outdoor canvas which it said was perfect for cushions etc so i ordered half a meter of that as well so in total i had a meter and a half of some waterproof fabrics now the bag pattern um I did have to order some hardware for the bags and the, the hardware that I had to order was some webbing and then some strap adjusters 
So I had two packs of strap adjusters, um, a strap buckle, which is the clasp that shuts, and then some D-rings, which I'll talk you through on the bag now. And this is my finished bag. I'll show you the finished bag. So this is the finished bag. And I'm really, really happy with it. So you can see that I've got the um, uh, burgundy on the bottom. I've got the matching burgundy ribbing. Uh, sorry, not ribbing, strapping. These are the D-rings. And these are the strap adjusters. And... Yeah, so a strap adjuster there as well. And then there's a strap adjuster just here too. And then this is your buckle. And then I've got this really nice um, kind of crafting cotton that I got from um, Hobbycraft. Um, it was just in my stash. And I'll turn the bag inside out as well to show you because it comes together really, really well. I actually added if you can see it i added a foam pocket and also i just made this myself and i did a foam pocket and a pencil pocket and i just cut out um a rectangle um finished this the sides and then top stitch down the middle and top stitched it on and, and that works really well and i think that would have been that's a great addition um as my sewing practice has um improved over the last year i'm starting to feel a bit more confident about adapting patterns and you know i knew that there's nothing worse than putting your bag your phone in your bag and then not being able to find it so i thought for me that would be a perfect thing um perfect thing to have in the bag for when i'm out and about so i also finished it with this leather label which says made by me which i got from um my current so Haley Jane, my most recent so Haley Jane box, which was from the Specky Seamstress, um, which are just really lovely. Um, it just it just works perfectly. The colours work perfectly. It was a dream to sew. Um, I used to sew on my to sew on this label. I used my stitch in the ditch foot, which I'm sure loads of you have seen seen before so obviously I use you can see I use this and then I line the, the needle up with the um, little metal marker there and I just basically use that to guide myself round and it gives a perfectly straight stitch um, so that's what I use for that now in respect of cutting this fabric out when it came it was so much softer than I thought it was going to be I thought you can see it's actually got a lot of drape to it I thought it was going to be quite stiff and hard to work with but this fabric was really really lovely and soft it would make a perfect jacket because it would just be comfy and you even if you just wanted a quick a rain mac a light rain mac you could use it just without being lined but yeah it'd be, it'd be super nice with like a fleece um as the lining yeah really really nice um cutting it out was fairly simple it wasn't too slippy I didn't pin it because that was one of the things that when I read up on sewing with waterproof fabric, you don't want to have holes in the fabric because they aren't easily hidden um, at all. So I made sure that I just used lots of weights, cut everything out, not on the fold, um, which was easier with the bag pattern because there were just a lot of rectangles, to be honest with you. And um, yeah, cut out fairly easily. Now, what I will say is with um, the needle, um, I just use a normal universal needle. And because it's lightweight, I used an 80 needle. I think if it had been a bit heavier, I just used a heavier weight needle. I was a bit worried that it might leave big holes in the top stitching, but I don't know if you can see that. As you can see, it hasn't done. Um, it's a really neat finish and it's sewn up really lovely. I'm really happy with my top stitching, something I've really, really been trying to work on. The only thing that I will say with the fabric is underneath the underneath the feed dogs, I would say it is very slippy. It does kind of slip to the side. Um, I do have a walking foot and I think next time I would probably use my walking foot. Um, it wasn't it didn't cause any major issues. Um, I just had to make sure I kept, you know, kept it straight. But that was just something to watch out for. The, the, the whole piece of fabric wanted to move because it was quite slippy. But apart from that, it was fine. I will say that um, 
this bad pattern is a good pattern but the instructions leave a lot to be desired I think the main problem with the instructions are there's too many steps in one step if that makes sense you know they need to be broken down a little bit clearer so yeah the instructions leave a little bit to be desired but I figured it out and um, the, the trickiest part really was getting my head round how to lay out all these um lay out the straps and get them attached on but to be fair I just kept reading through the instructions looking at the pictures and eventually I got there and took my time and I'm really really happy with it it's turned out so well um I definitely would sew with waterproof fabric again and I really really like this bag I didn't think I'd like it but I really really do I'm really keen to um use it and wear it and i actually took some photographs which i'll put on in the rain yesterday and <laughs> you can see it actually has got the rain on it from being waterproof i don't think i would ever have purchased waterproof fabric if i hadn't have done this um and brand ambassadorship so i want to thank uk fabrics online for um opening my eyes to waterproof fabric and i definitely think I'm going to perhaps make myself a little raincoat in, in this fabric because it's just really lovely. quite like a matching one and they have lots of different colours. And I'll put all the links in the fabrics below. And they have actually got a Black Friday sale on at the moment where they've got 15% off. So yeah, so um, just thinking any other tips. Oh, the other tip about sewing waterproof fabric is so you have to be really careful if you apply heat. I did apply heat to this because I used some quilting cotton as a barrier and had a very low heat to press the seams but um a lot of the advice on the internet is with it is not to use heat and to use your fingers to press the seams uh, but i did use heat but i did test it out first of all on a scrap piece of the fabric just to make sure that i could um you know i didn't ruin the fabric in any way um and i also tested out my stitches on some scrap fabric before i went going with the fabric and then just to say that i actually did make this in um i would probably say this only took a meter of fabric in total so because i had some left over i decided to make myself a matching hat and i chose the um waves and wild sandcastle hat um sandcastle bucket hat um to make and this is my hat now i'm not going to win any awards for stylish fashion but as far as um hats go for taking the dog on a walk and keeping your um hair dry this is perfect i feel like a bit of a fisherman um and a little bit of a plonker but i do actually really think i will wear this when it's really raining and it's actually reversible and i've been meaning to make this pattern for the kids for summer so i wanted to give it a go and thought this would be a perfect go for it so yeah i've got my own reversible sandcastle hat um which is just great it's a free pattern so yeah i utilized all the fabric up and i now have a matching bag and hat which i'm really really pleased about um i did struggle with the hat to be honest with you because there is a lot of like stretching and manipulating because there's a lot of circles and curved seams um, and because this um fabric is quite hard to stretch um yeah i did struggle a little bit um and i did interface it which made it even harder um so yeah it's not my finest work but it's wearable and i'm happy with it so yeah that is my rain hat <laughs> and then the final make that i made now i haven't got any pictures yet of alice in this but i am going to get some at the weekend because we're going to do some painting I wanted to make Alice a little art smock for nursery. She is constantly going to nursery and getting completely covered in paint from head to toe. Now, I don't know if they put aprons on them or not. It doesn't seem to be because she ends up with paint all over her tops. And sometimes it comes out and sometimes it doesn't. So I've been looking for an art smock pattern and I found this one by Peekaboo Pattern Shop. And it's this lovely little smock that comes in ages two to three, four to five or six to seven um, with three sleeve length options. And you can use it using waterproof fabric, um, laminated fabric. And it's a very, very simple make. Now, I used the canvas that I got from um, UK Fabrics Online. I had half a metre here and I didn't do the pocket um, because I didn't have the fabric to match the um, 
and I didn't want to cover up the cheetah. So yeah, I made this for her. It was so easy to make, bias binding all the way round. Now this fabric was less slippy, but was much stiffer. So it was um, a little bit harder to sew um, around the curved seams, but it's come together really well and I love it. So I'm gonna get some photos about this of this in action at the weekend. Um, I still use the 80 needle because although it's a bit thicker, it's not massively thick. And yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's got this chevron print on it. There's loads of different patterns for this. And these would make some perfect outdoor cushions. Um, so yeah, I'm really keen to get her sort of, um, wearing that at the weekend. I think that's really super cute. That's the, sewing, that's the main bit of sewing that I've been doing this week, getting those made up. And I've really, really enjoyed doing something new. Really finding that making different things, not just clothing, is just really interesting. And it's a great way to improve your skills as well. Um, and the greatest thing about it is not having the pressure of fitting them to your body. So that's really enjoyable. So yeah, if you haven't tried to make any bags yet um, and it's something you're thinking of doing, I, I urge you to do it. I really, really enjoyed it and I didn't think I would do. So I think the next thing that I'd like to perhaps try is a little backpack for Alice for school. Um, but yeah, that might be my next thing that I do. Okay, the only other piece of sewing that I've got to show you is I have completed my toile of the Pietra Pants by Closet Core Patterns. So I have made them in a old bed sheet in black, a black bed sheet, and I don't know if you can see them. The pockets are absolutely lovely. I'm really, really pleased with how they've turned out. Now they do fit me really, really well. I made the size 14, the US size 14, and um, they are a little bit baggier on the leg. I need to probably grade between the 14 and the 12 um, once I hit the um, above the knee because they're a little bit baggy through the lower leg but that's something I can just um, rectify um, on the final version by just taking them in a little bit um, but I'm really really happy with them so I've cut out now my main fabric for the top I'm not going to twirl that I'm just going to make that and I have still got to cut out I just need to make the adjustments perhaps to the pattern to taper the legs in um, and yeah, then I'm going to um, get the Pietra pants cut out in my main fabric and get them sewn up. So that's what I'm going to be doing next week. The main focus for me um, will be making up my Pietra pants and Celio top. And then I also had my delivery of my Little Miss So-and-So um, subscription box yesterday and the fabrics come and the pattern. So I have washed that and I'm ready to make that. So I'll be making that next week in readiness to get my um, vlog up and ready for you by the end of the month. So yeah, lots of um, exciting things that I need to get done this week. The other thing that I'd like to get done as well is get my advent calendars sewn up because obviously they need to be ready for the first of December and that is when vlogmas starts as well so I'm really looking forward to vlogmas but I'm slightly scared because I didn't I haven't done it before and I really don't know how I'm going to manage to just film and edit every day but I'll see how I get on um and whether I'll have enough content to keep you entertained but yeah my life is not as exciting as it used to be now I work from home every day um but yeah I'll see what see, hopefully you'll enjoy it some days it might be as long as others but we'll see so sorry it's a bit of a short one today um and sorry i've probably been talking a load of nonsense because i don't feel great but um i was keen to show you what i've been making because i was excited with these makes um i hope you've enjoyed this vlog and if you have enjoyed it please click the like button and if you don't subscribe i'm so close to 3,000 subscribers i'd love to get there for a christmas present so if you don't subscribe already please consider subscribing and um, I hope you get lots of sewing done this week and I'll see you all soon. Happy sewing. Bye.